Brazilian Marina Amaral, born in 1994, was studying international relations at university. But her twin passions for history and photography led her to abandon her studies to become a full-time artist. And her chosen medium is the colorization of historical photographs. It's a skill that she's honed to perfection and one she's recently used for a project that combines a poignant sense of horror with a deep respect for humanity. Amaral's interest has been captured by a wide variety of historical periods, ranging from the Civil War to World War II. That was evident when she partnered with historian Dan Jones to publish a book in 2017, Colors of Time, A New History of the World, 1850-1960. But the subject that she's been drawn to time and again is the Holocaust. This Nazi abomination saw the mass murder of six million Jews as well as the liquidation of homosexuals, gypsies, left-wingers and others. The Nazis murdered some two-thirds of the European population of Jews between 1941 and 1945. Many of them were gassed in the industrial murder factories at death camps such as Auschwitz. Others were shot and buried in mass graves. Hitler's plan to murder the Jews of Europe is illustrated by thousands of photographs. But almost all of those are in black and white. As Amaral herself said in an interview with the History website, when I see a black and white photo, I feel that what I'm seeing is not real. Sometimes I feel like the event or the person that I'm seeing is only real in history books, and this is not true. Driven by her desire to breathe new life into historic photos, Amaral had been colorizing pictures related to the Holocaust for some time. Her meticulous work can transform the sometimes lifeless gray tones of old black and white photos into vibrant colors that might lend new relevance to the images. The concentration camps were eventually liberated at the end of World War II, as Russian forces swept towards Germany from the east and the Allies came from the west. The sites that the liberating troops and journalists came across remain with them for the rest of their lives. BBC broadcaster Richard Dimblevy was one of those who witnessed the scenes at the liberation of the Bergen-Belsen camp. In the 1945 BBC News Bulletin, he reported, Here over an acre of ground lay dead and dying people. You could not see which was which, the living lay with their heads against the corpses and around them moved the awful, ghostly procession of emaciated, aimless people, with nothing to do and with no hope of life. There was even a camp that was reserved especially for women, Ravensbrück. Just 56 miles from Berlin, its inmates included Jews, Poles, Russians, French and Dutch. Some were dragooned into forced labor, while others were the subject of ghastly medical experiments. Around 130,000 women spent time in Ravensbrück between 1939 and 1945. Of those, about 50,000 had died by the time the camp was liberated. Amaral decided that she wanted to undertake a specific project dealing with photographs from the Auschwitz camp. Its title is Faces of Auschwitz, and the project is being funded by the Michael Frank Family Charitable Fund. Frank is a native of Long Island, New York, and his foundation funds projects such as Amaral's. In an article on Amaral's Facebook page, Frank described how he and his wife came across one of Amaral's colorized photos of a young Auschwitz girl. We were so moved by it. The color gave the young victim life, it gave her a story, Frank said. We knew instantly we had to get involved with this. Kislawa Kolka was a Polish girl born on August 15, 1928, in the village of Wokoslidzek. She was sent to Auschwitz in December 1942. Kolka died there aged 14 on March 12, 1943, although exactly how we do not know. She was just one of some 230,000 under-18s incarcerated in Auschwitz between 1940 and 1945. Many of the original black and white photographs of the camp were taken by a Polish inmate at Auschwitz, Wilhelm Brass, prisoner number 3444. Forced to work there by the Nazis, Brass was a professional portrait photographer and took perhaps as many as 50,000 identity photographs at the camp. He survived Auschwitz and saved some of the images, despite being ordered by the Nazis to destroy them. Brass died in 2012 aged 94. Deliana Raidmakers was a Jehovah's Witness, another group persecuted by the Nazis. She was arrested in the Netherlands and sent to Auschwitz in November 1942 after a stay at the Ravensbrück camp. 
In Auschwitz, she became prisoner 25,563, and she died there a month later. We can only hope that Raidmaker's faith gave her some comfort. In the last letter that she sent to her family, she wrote, Go bravely onwards without fear, Jehovah is with us, what can, mere, people do to us? An estimated 1,400 Jehovah's Witnesses met their deaths in Nazi concentration camps. Another 250 were put to death for refusing to enter military service. Born on May 15, 1889, Salomon Honig is recorded as being a merchant. He was a Polish Jew, and the Nazis arrested him in the city of Tarnow. Honig arrived at Auschwitz on March 5, 1942, and was registered with the prisoner number 26,389. Salomon Honig's imprisonment at Auschwitz lasted a mere 10 days, since he died there on March 15, 1942. The SS record-keeping system noted his death as the result of a stroke. It's just as likely that he was murdered, however, spurious causes of death were often recorded to mask the brutal realities of the camp. Janina Novak was born in Poland on August 19, 1917, and her time in Auschwitz started on June 12, 1942, when she became prisoner number 7615. Novak's story is somewhat different to those of most prisoners. That's because she actually managed to escape while out of the camp on a work detail after just 12 days at Auschwitz. Novak was the first woman to successfully break out of Auschwitz. Although they could not punish Novak, the Nazis instead made life even more hellish for the rest of her forced labor unit. Following her escape, Novak made her way to the Polish city of Lodz. But after some nine months of freedom, she was rearrested and arrived back at Auschwitz on May 8. 1943. Later, she was transferred to Ravensbrück and survived to see the liberation of that camp in April 1945. The original black and white pictures of Auschwitz prisoners are in the Auschwitz Memorial Archives, which are held at the Auschwitz-Birkenau Memorial and Museum in Poland. The museum has almost 40,000 of these prisoner photographs in its collection. In total, an estimated 1.3 million people passed through Auschwitz and, at a minimum, 1.1 million of those died. The Red Army's 322nd Rifle Division liberated Auschwitz in January 1945. The Soviet troops found some 7,500 prisoners alive and 600 dead. The SS had tried to hide the evidence of its hideous crimes by force marching prisoners west, demolishing crematoriums and destroying records. Marina Amaral's work helps us to remember the true nature of the hideous genocide that blighted Europe in the 20th century.